Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the Women of the Future Virtual Event Series. Um, I'm Linda Ritchie. Um, I'm very happy to be here today. And just a little bit about me. I have a long career advising executive management teams at some of the world's most successful companies. I also speak regularly on stage uh, about the metaverse and the impact it will have. I am going to um, start the presentation by doing a slideshow. Is that working, Anne-Marie? Uh, uh, it's hard to tell. Um, was that good? Did that work? Don't see it yet. Okay. Um, hit present. Okay. Present on another screen. No, that's not working either. I might just have to talk through it, which is fine. Actually, I had some amazing graphics. Did that, is that good? I'm so sorry. I'm having some technical issues. Uh, okay, never mind. I'm just going to have to talk through it. Um, I'll just do hand motions like a puppet or something. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I'm here to, take, to talk about digital beings, which are the intersection of artificial intelligence and XR. This is a short talk, um, and there's a lot of information, so uh, I, I, I'm going to have to limit it. I'm not talking about generative AI today, which I know is what something everybody's talking about these days and playing with, which is ChatGPT, Midjourney, Dali. It's more about uh, machine learning and natural language interaction. Uh, and we're going to be talking about what is a digital being and um, go over some of the use cases for entertainment and music and sports and relationships. And uh, then a few closing thoughts. So why should you be interested in digital beings? Well, the, the, the easy answer is it's, it's a massive opportunity. Uh, the market size is forecast to be roughly, I mean, 528 billion. That is a B. Uh, by 2030 uh, with a 46% compounded annual growth rate. So even if you cut that in half, this space has a lot of economic potential. Even if you cut it in quarters, it's pretty compelling. Uh, the key driving factor behind this is that adding AI-driven digital humans is an opportunity to truly emotionally engage and connect with customers in a way that you've never been able to do it before. Now, humans already do that. We do that with celebrities. We identify with entertainment characters and sports people, uh, but, but that is truly barely scratching the surface. Um, it isn't a big leap to see that this is a continuation and evolution of that. Uh, digital humans can bring meaningful connection to the digital world where empathy and compassion have disappeared from customer interactions. And when I say that, I was on chat yesterday with a company for I don't know how long with their automated system. <laughs> it's not really a fuzzy, warm experience, is it now? So this is where it can go. So anything you can do with technology is infinitely scalable and also never sleeps, another benefit. And emotionally connected customers are proven to be four times more loyal to brands and likely to spend twice as much, according to the Harvard Business Review. So obviously that's something that increasingly with all the information that is thrown at us digitally, um, being able to increase customer loyalty is something that we want to do. So what is a digital being? It's a digital representation of something that uses AI to interact with us. Um, either with AR in your physical space or something that you interact with completely immersed in VR. So it could be any aesthetic. It doesn't have to be a human. It could be a bouncing ball of light that shows you where to go with Google Maps. It could be a non-player character giving us a mission in Skyrim. It could be a talking hot dog. Uh, these are all representations where the personality and behaviors are autonomous and driven by AI. Um, ideally, they offer natural conversation as the interaction mode. I know a natural language is still something we're trying to crack. Uh, we're getting there. And they interact using verbal and nonverbal cues, including tone of voice and facial expressions. They, I'm sorry, I got lost. I'm tr still trying to pr uh, broadcast the, uh, the presentation. Um, they exist entirely in um, digital domains and they interact with us through social media, games, web browsers, VR environments, anywhere that we currently interact with digital spaces and computing. And we look at screens all day in a large variety of ways. So that's how it's gonna happen. I also wanted to talk about what isn't a digital being. So it is not an avatar. Uh, it is a di that's a, a digital puppet. It has no autonomy or intelligence. I've seen the term used interchangeably. They are absolutely not synonymous. Um, an avatar is a digital puppet. 
Um, I love that term because that's what they are. Uh, a virtual human isn't, and it shouldn't even be considered an avatar, even if it is run by AI. Another thing that isn't a digital being is motion capture. Uh, it's just digital motion that's overlaid onto a human like Gollum. A CGI character, no matter how much it does look human, uh, is a scripted object with a team of talented animators making the move. Uh, there's nothing to say that in the future they can't be driven by AI, but currently they're just scripted, highly produced digital representations. So on that note, let's talk about where we really are with digital beings and what they are. Specific purpose virtual humans um, exist, even though they are currently heavily sandboxed in terms of scope. Uh, there are a number of areas that are currently being used for or will be shortly. In customer service roles, chatbots are starting to be replaced by virtual humans that can converse with customers either through text input or very limited conversation. Uh, this does exist, although it is still really early. I had an interaction with Ruth, the cookie coach on the Nestle site, who is there to help people with their cookie making questions. Uh, it was quite clearly scripted. I managed to throw Ruth quite easily by asking her about it, whether I could add sesame seeds to my cookies. She didn't know how to answer that. That is not you know, quite AI yet, but we're starting to get there. Companies like Soul Machines, Unique, and Didymo are leading the way with digital humans. Currently, this is primarily where the focus of digital humans are, is because it's the low-hanging fruit. It's a business model everybody understands, has a very narrow set of data. It's not particularly sexy, but the learnings uh, are going to fuel so many industries. So for example, in gaming, we have non-player characters. They're characters that are controlled by the computer, not by the player. And they have a predetermined set of behaviors. They are instruction guides, they are pals, they are foes. They have autonomous behavior that reacts to what we do in the game, but are not necessarily the product of true artificial intelligence because they're very limited. More and more games are using AI for non-player um, characters, NPCs, and bad guys to make the games more immersive and responsive. Ideally, in the future, close soon, we'll be able to interact with them as if they're just another player and impact on how we experience the game and making the plots more complex and definitely more immersive. So who doesn't love pets, right? Uh, my own dog will probably bark today. Um, there are a few companies out there designing AI-driven pets that will be able to accompany us as we move through life. They aren't designed to just be cute digital manifestations of cats, dogs, dragons, whatever you want, but be infused with individual personalities that learn and behaviors that change over time as they learn how we prefer to interact with them. Um, VR Pets just um, has been around for a little while. They have cute little you know, pets you can interact with in, in VR, but Petiverse launched last year with in ambitions to create cross-platform interoperability for our digital pets so we can take them wherever we go digitally. And Niantic just launched Peridot. I don't know if it's Peridot or Peridot, um, which brings AR dogs into our physical spaces. I actually did this uh, uh, last week. I put I put the little Peridot dog next to my real dog. Uh, obviously, the, the real dog did not see the fake one, but the fake one did see the real one and ran around it. It was pretty, pretty damn smart, actually. Uh, a lot of fun. I took some screenshots. It was a, a blast, actually. You have to feed it all these kinds of things. It's a Tamagotchi. Um, so we're, we're starting to go there. Um, let's talk about where this might be going then. So consider the impact of easily accessible AR. So not the, you know, clunky hold up the phone stuff, but combined with glasses with the ability to talk naturally and interact with the digital being in your physical space. So this is not tomorrow, this is not next week, but it is pretty sure bet that this is the direction we're going in and it will happen sooner rather than later. So for example, in entertainment, AI uh, fueled digital beings are, and I have no doubts about this, the future of the entertainment industry. We've had dead actors resurrected digitally. We had Audrey Hepburn in a Galaxy Chocolate commercial, for example. Still, the AI used it to match move her face with an actor's motions. It's really just CGI. Uh, replacing actors, though, is looking increasingly realistic. AI today can do a fair job of mimicking human emotions while reacting to scripts with natural mo movement. Uh, back in 2020, which is the Stone Ages at this point, but I did see Neon's Digital Humans at CES, and they correctly used AI to read text that they had never seen before, and they had the correct motion and the correct intonation. So it's not a huge leap to imagine that AI can realistically interpretate, interpolate emotions, but it can also drive a digital version of that actor. And at that point, an actor's digital version can be in movies forever. So brace yourself for Tom Cruise at 100, still you know, doing his own stunts. 
um, and nothing about entertainment and what that means when you can interact with it instead of just watching it and it will become interactive theater. So that digital clone of Tom Cruise can become your best buddy. You can have drinks with him in your room because he's sitting there as an AR character. Uh, you can interact with skydive with him in VR. Your living room can become the set uh, and you can be sitting in the middle of it, living it and experience it with him. So how about music? Um, when, you know, I was just talking about acting, but it counts just as much for music. Um, ABBA, and I grew up in Europe, so I say that funny, I realize, held a concert in London last year with holograms of their digitally younger selves performing new music. So imagine a world where dead artists, AI, can keep creating music in the style. I know that that is already happening and then perform it using a digitally created um, version of them and infused with their personality and motions. So actually recreating them. Tupac uh, had a hologram perform at Coachella a while back. It really wowed the audiences, but it took a massive amount of human effort to create it. And at some point, AI will be able to run that simulation without all the imagineering and technical prowess needed. And then at that point, every fan can party with that digital twin, sit next to it in your living room, uh, go onto your own private VR stage with it and actually interact with it in a motion that hasn't been scripted. Now for sports, uh, I'm not a big sports person, uh, but imagine that you can play basketball with Michael Jordan in VR and you can compete against him while the AI drives his performance and bases it on his moves and improvises and actually matches your skill level as well. So tailored to you, customized to you, driven by AI. Now, I think one of the biggest areas of growth, uh, obviously, and something that's going to be really interesting is in marketing and advertising. So we have virtual influencers right now and brand ambassadors, but AI takes them to the next level because we talk uh, about brand engagement all the time, but we don't really engage. What if it means hanging out with your favorite influencers? So forget Tom Cruise, forget real people who've been digitalized. In the future, we won't need to even have the actor. You can create a digital influencer that does all those things. So there are a number of virtual influencers already out there. Uh, one of the most hugely followed, and to be honest, I'd never heard of this person or this this this, uh, this digital being before I started doing these presentations about AI and, and this stuff. And it's called she's called Ludo Magalu. She's in Brazil. Uh, she's been around since 2009. She posts, I can't believe this, 30 million followers on social media. And she earned a staggering, and this is a staggering number, $552 million in 2019. So I'm not entirely sure I'd call her a digital human. She's more of a virtual character. She and others like her don't interact yet. And there is no AI to speak of. But it's not a huge leap to see that the next steps is to infuse, infuse Ludo's behavior with AI and make one-to-one -one interaction with her possible. So this is complete catnip to brands, obviously, when each and every one of those 30 million followers could chat with her directly. So when you're doing this, when you're thinking about this, I think consider what is your brand? Who is your brand personified? Now, this is stuff we always talk about, but this is truly personified. We'll be able to have a true brand relationship when AI drives digital action, interaction with a being that best represents who the brand actually is. Another application, and this is something that I actually care about deeply, is loneliness and the role of conversational AI companions. I loved saying, and I've been saying this for years now, that VR can be the end of loneliness. Um, I did a TED Talk about this in 2017, I believe, about you know social VR and, and how much benefit it can have. Loneliness is a real problem, and for many, and not just for senior citizens, as many think. Loneliness and social isolation affects humans very deeply. More than 30% of adults suffer from loneliness, rising to almost 50% over 65, and it can take a very serious physical toll. Unique is targeting this health issues with digital humans. They say IQ meets EQ. Conversational AI companions offer a warm, friendly interaction, um, and it connects with people on an emotional level. So that's one kind of companionship. Another one is um, digital love. Uh, there are a few hundred uh, virtual girlfriend apps out there with a surprising number of people posting very emotional comments about how wonderful they are. This includes AR reality apps like the one where you can place a digital being in your living room. Uh, there's one, and you don't have the screenshot, <laughs> as you can imagine. It's by Bro Lab, which, by the way, surprises no one. Uh, it has over 500,000 downloads. Uh, it has text interaction right now. But as soon as you can actually start talking to it and put this girlfriend that you designed in your girl in your in your living room uh, or boyfriend, um, whatever you like, um, you can imagine that you can start forming actually true 
emotional attachments. So to wrap up my thoughts on all of this, we are literally facing a historic moment in humanity's history. We, we have no idea where this is going to end up. We are still very early, uh, but consider the impact of easily accessible XR combined with the ability to ta talk and interact naturally with digital beings in your physical space or being able to talk to your own personal Wilson on your private VR island and have him talk back. Consider brand relationships in a world where you can actually play basketball with LeBron James or learn fencing from D'Artagnan or science from Albert Einstein. Now, I realize that essentially what I am talking about is the holodeck from Star Trek, and it is still science fiction, but we aren't there yet, and we may not get there in our lifetimes, but slowly and surely, we are moving there, and improvements are developing super rapidly. So as a brand, I'd give some serious thought to what it really means to interact with customers when your brand is 3D fleshed out, so to speak, character that can talk with customers and draw upon and synthesize all the data you've gathered on them to create a meaningful interaction, one that even learns from each engagement and becomes with time. We are increasingly living in the digital. We spend entire days behind a variety of screens. Soon we'll have ways to interact through AR that doesn't require clunky hold up the phone processes and VR for that matter. So when we're immersed in our 3D digital worlds, either physical ones augmented with digital or immersed in created one, how will AI driven characters influence our experiences there? Only time will tell.